kind of hard to see the pattern in this lighting. Hmm. lot easier to work with than those stupid ass um, Garcinias. I'll tell you that right now. I'm going to put these all in the pile right here. And then we'll throw them in here. Not wrap them. Up, get a system going. I wish you could see how beautiful these scions are. You can't see it with uh, the lighting like this. The sun is right above me. Maybe if I get over here like this, it's better because the sun is in the south. What's up? We're <coughs> grafting Patanga tubas. Variegated Patanga tubas. I'm trying to get the camera set up for you guys. Oh, great. All zoomed in. It's not gonna work. You've gotta just be engineered. If that's what I think. Of my figure should out. Take no for an answer. If I could just lift this up. Get my phone a little dirty. There. I look great, don't I? I feel like I'm fucking cast away. Wilson. You can see how pretty the pattern is on there. If I hold it still. much easier to graft than the uh, Garcinias because of how small they are. I won't be wasting as much tape. I wonder if I should be wrapping these as I go. Wonderful pattern. I just don't want to have to figure out which way is up or down. I've got a way of messing that up. Maybe I should start wrapping them right now. Mm, way easier to work with. No latex. When they're so skinny, they wrap right up. It takes two seconds. Not a lot of tape wasted. Yeah. I, I like grafting Eugenias a lot more than Garcinias. It's, you know, if you're doing great numbers, the Garcinias, oh, annoying. Don't ever cut them down before grafting the leaves on a Garcinia. Just a nightmare. All the oil, the juices drip out, and you're stuck with that all in your hands. When if you just wrap it as you go, you won't have that issue as much. Because I've grafted them in the past. So you know what I noticed with some of these scions, especially the rare stuff that's variegated or anything that's maybe harder to graft. Sometimes I think less is more. If you go and use a bunch of scion wood, that's just more shit to go wrong, more uh, liability. If you understand what I'm saying. There's a, a certain point at which having them trimmed down to a smaller size, I think is beneficial. That's less material to get stressed or damaged. It's only, I'm only saying this if it's something that you find is particularly difficult to graft. Just less is more, always trim them back. 
Don't be scared to trim shit back and, and use less. You don't have to use all that wood. Less is more. You're gonna have a better shot with a smaller piece and definitely avoid using any um, wood that is green still. You want all the hard wood or semi hard wood because the green shit likes to die. And these variegated Batanga tubas, if they get too hot, they don't like it. But they can take the heat once they're established. But when you're grafting them, I've had trouble getting these to go. So, you know, I get about 50% success rate on the variegated Batanga tubas. But we're gonna do a small batch right now for the year. I don't think I'm gonna do more than this. Whatever I'm doing today is it. And I'm getting there. Some of these are gonna be real nice. And then hopefully half of them take. And then that way I can put them on my website. I don't know if I'm gonna do the eBay thing. I've been enjoying the website. I do have some grafted red Jabuticabas that I wanna throw on the website soon. They're very nice, close to fruiting. I haven't figured out an exact price on them yet, but. It's gonna be somewhere around 200 bucks. If I can get them to fruit, it would be probably around 275 shipped if it had flowers on it. You know what I mean? That would be probably my set price on that. Maybe a little higher, I don't know. Have to look into that. It would depend on the tree itself, but I'd like to be able to get someone a fruiting Jabuticaba shipped to their house for less than 300 would be nice. You know, right around 250 to the to your door. But that's hard to, at this point, I think that's kind of hard to pull off with the, uh, how long it takes for them to fruit and all that and the size of them. Very hard to pull off. I think I did sell some in that range on, no, I think, yeah, they were right about that on eBay. They were getting around 300 by the time it was at your door. If it was fruiting, it had to have fruit on it for it to fetch that price. So, remember, less is more. Let's go ahead and prune that back. I named this variety tree frog because it looks a lot like a tree frog. The skin of a frog's backside. There's my dog. He's up to no good. I'm almost done. There's that beautiful pattern that y'all are paying all these fine American US dollars for. start grafting in a second. Really not too exciting when I graph. You just kind of do a cleft graph and pray. The real hard part is not grafting them. It's keeping them happy afterwards. That's the hard part. It's keeping your conditions just right where they're not too hot, not too cold, not too wet, not too dry. You know the deal. Thanks to the, the four viewers that are here. Appreciate you. You're doing it right. You're making me proud to be an American farmer growing Brazilian fruits. Proud to be an American 
where at least I know I can fruit trees. And I won't forget the Brazilian growers who sent them seeds to me. And I proudly graft up a thousand trees. And I proudly graft up God bless the USA. All right, I think we're almost there. And I'm proud to be fudge. That's what's hurting me. I got sand spurs on my shoes. They hurt. And that's been pricking at my, my side. Now that the property is wet, we're getting sand spurs around here, man. All right. Ah. Uh. So these are all the scraps right here. I don't see anything really worth taking. And I was able to only, I thought I would get more than that, but I guess I don't have not many. That's all the scions I got there. All right. I gotta flip this camera around and start crafting. Probably should clean everything off. I did clean my knife last time I put it away. I did. I cleaned it. I'm good. Grafting these is pretty straightforward. Just like a cleft graft. Nothing fancy. I would say the cleft is maybe the most versatile graft there is. I mean, shit. If you can't cleft graft it, then what are you going to do? Chip butted. I got all this extra tape I've been pulling off. One down. You can really cut yourself with these shears. I cut my hand the other day, not bad. Just a slight cut, but my, my dad out of nowhere, I'm talking to him on the phone and I'm like, yeah, I'm doing some grafting. He's like, I, I'm worried you're gonna cut yourself. And I'm like, you're worried I'm gonna cut myself. I'm like, what do I do for a living, bro? Calm down. I mean, okay, I cut myself. It's like, and then he said it, and then I never cut myself. And then after he says, out of nowhere, I'm worried that you're gonna cut yourself. Then I cut myself, but not bad, just a little nick on my hand. It's part of the game, bro. You get little nicks and cuts. I was just being careless with the pruning shears.
I'd like to graph these a lot faster than what I'm doing right now, but I'm afraid I'll knock down the phone. Yep, there we go. Almost knocked it. Yeah, I thought these scions would be bigger, and I brought big plants over here to grow. And there's just not a lot of scions. I should be splitting these scions into much smaller scions, but I'm not going to do that. My, my goal is not to graft a great quantity of these, all right? I just want to graft about 20 of them for the year and keep it rare. I'm not trying to do 500, all right? We're going to keep it rare. And then maybe the next guy that gets it, he can graft 500 and bring the price down. But I'm not going to be that guy. You go ahead. You go ahead and flood the market. You go ahead. I'm not going to be him. I don't have time for it. It's a rare plant. It's actually kind of hard to graft. I mean, they don't really take too easy. I mean, someone will do it better than me, but it's really just pretty to look at too. I mean, go ahead, graft a million. You go graft a million, the price is going to come down. It's fine. That's good. Everyone needs one. Graft a million. Bring the price down. Don't you worry. I've kind of, I've thought about that before a couple times. It's going to bring the price down. I'm looking for a big scion that I don't really have it. My scion. Remember them commercial? My scion. Did they even know that there would be fruit tree growers that were like, bro, I never thought of that. That is my scion. I'm looking to get a scion. Oh dang, so wait, the car I bought, I did get a car, forgot to tell you guys. I did get a vehicle. Let's go ahead and talk vehicle for a minute. Now, now follow me here, would you? I got eight viewers. Uh, I had a 2012 Ford Ranger. It got real wet one night and I was skating and I was at a parking garage and it, it, it flooded the road that I was near and I didn't realize the road was flooded. I pulled out of the parking garage to leave and ran my Ford Ranger into a flooded road. And so I got a little insurance payout. They paid me out like seven, seventy-two hundred. Ford Ranger 2012 had uh, 200,000 miles on it, believe it or not. Okay. We got a little insurance payout. And then from there, what I did is... Oh, I dropped my knife is what I did. I shopped around looking for cars for a long time. And I was looking to get a truck, really. I wanted to get a truck. But I couldn't find one with that was low mileage. And I didn't want to come up with a payment for a car. I, did, I, I wanted just something. I, I was like, fuck it. I, I can't afford a truck with low miles or anything that's really reliable. And I didn't want to come up with a car payment. So I was like, I just need reliable transportation so i shopped around i looked at some cars almost bought a few but i didn't and i waited maybe how long did i wait i waited a good two months or more maybe to finally pull the trigger on something all right and what i got was uh my brother's friend had a 2014 okay 2014 Hyundai Elantra and it only had 43,000 300 no yeah 43,306 miles so I got the Hyundai Elantra from him and I was like, yo, it's only got, you know, it seemed to be fine to me. 
it ran pretty well. Well, I was like, all right, I'm gonna take it to the mechanic just to get looked at. You know what I mean? Just, I want this thing to be tip top. I take it to the mechanic. I, when I bought the car, I already knew one of the door handles was busted off. They have these like cheap plastic handles that bust it off. One of the door handles was busted off and the driver's side window wouldn't roll down. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna go get that fixed right off the bat and see what else is wrong with it and just see what, it, you know, I wanna get this thing tipped up. It's only got 43,000 miles. Well, I took it to the mechanic and he's like, well, here's what else is wrong with it. I needed a new rear tire because he, apparently the, the previous owner drove on it flat and fucked it up and fucked up the tire pressure sensor too. So I needed a new tire. To fix the window was like 400. To fix the door was like another 100. Um, trying to think of what else. Uh, I paid for like a $100 inspection. You know what I mean? Just to have them do a look over, $135 to make them look over all the components. And there's something else that needed to be replaced. I, I don't recall offhand. But the main kicker, the big thing was He's like, and I'm sorry to tell you, buddy, but you do have an oil leak. It's slow, but you have a slow oil leak. And for us to fix it, we got to take out the transmission. And I was like, you do? Well, what's that going to cost? Anyone have any guesses as to what to cost to fix a small oil leak? I think it's because of like a gasket or some one of the seals is just bad on the Elantra. He's got to take the transmission out to do it. It's really labor that's going to eat you up. But what do you think it's going to cost to fix this oil leak on this 2014 Elantra? Got rear main seal. Dang, whoever said that, I think is right. I got to look that up. How much? 25? Oh, I like your, I, nice. I like the way you think. 2,500. Any other guesses? Cause I like the way he's thinking. I like where his mind's at. Cause now he's giving me all sorts of confidence in the world. Uh, 1300. I love my mechanic. When he told me that I was like thinking about shopping it around and I may call another couple places, but I don't think anyone's gonna do it for less than that. I don't. He said 1300. And I want to believe that he's not taking me to the cleaners. This guy's always been good to me. He's always been good to me. Yeah, 1300 to get that oil leak fixed. He said it was so slow I could still run it, no problem, just to always put oil in it. And he said it wasn't of like paramount, paramount importance that I get it fixed right away. Yeah, about right. So I'm gonna, I, I luckily, okay. So wait, I had to put, I had to put, um, Yeah, I had to put how much already to fix everything like the window and the door. So I fixed the window, the door, and I got like a synthetic oil change and all that. And I got the inspection, which is a hundred bucks, synthetic oil. It's gonna cost me like a little under 1200 to get the minor, the cosmetic shit done, you know? The door handle fixed, the window to roll up, a new tire, I have to get a new tire. It doesn't have a spare too, so I gotta buy a spare. But other than that, so I put in 1200, I'm gonna have to put 1200 in now and then 1300 later. But how much do you think I paid for the 2014 Elantra with 43,000 miles? That's my other question is how much did I pay for that? We're playing the guessing game here. Anyone know? Any idea? How much did he pay for the Elantra? 20,014. 43,000 miles. The door was broken, you know, the handle, and it wouldn't roll down. The window wouldn't roll down. And that's about all I knew about. 7K, oh, I wish. I could have probably got it for seven if I really tried. I wasn't in a haggling mood. I, I did eight, I just paid him eight cash and just did it, just got it done with. I was like, dang, the miles are low. 
I was thinking about going to the dealership the last time I was at a dealership looking and how hard they wanted to fuck me. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna haggle. I mean, I could have tried, I knew I could, I probably could have talked him down to six. But he was like a family friend and I, I just wasn't in the mood to haggle. I just wanted to be done. I was like, look at them. I looked at the comps. Yeah. I looked at the comps and I was like, I can't find one with this type of mileage for cheaper. Whoever's commenting, I'm sorry, I can't read your name perfectly, but I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, Tis the end, my friends. My sweetest friends, the end. Thank you, bro. Yeah, so that's where I'm at on that. So I guess all in all, if I put in, I'm gonna end up paying about 10,000 total. And then I'll have a, a fucking 2014 Elantra that's ready to go with no real issues. And I'll come see you. I'll drive out. We'll go skate, man. I want to come see your fruit trees, man. I'm mobile again. I just, I just want to go see the world. I just want to start traveling again. You know, get out there. Get my feet wet. So that's where I'm at, guys. We got her in at the mechanic right now. I just got a car back for not having a car for about two and a half months. And then I got to take it right into the mechanic and he's going to hold it till Monday at least. But you know what? I, I didn't have to. This is the main thing. This is the, where I'm thinking of it. I didn't have to come up with a car payment. And I, and I have something that's got low mileage. That was my goal. I could not have a car payment. I will not do that to myself. I will not take a loan. I will not go in debt. I will have things paid off cash. And I don't play the credit game. I don't. I don't do it. So that's where I was at. And I'm, I'm pretty happy, I guess, you know, because I can afford a couple grand fix up to make everything perfect. But he said I don't even have to do the, the $1,300 uh, oil leak until uh, later on. I can just put oil in it and just run it for a little bit, okay? It ran perfect. I would have never known anything was wrong with it. But I'm really happy I took it in and paid this guy to do this little diagnostic thing. You know what I mean? I, I knew to just go ahead you just put eight on, you spent eight on a car, just take it to the mechanic, let him do his little diagnostic. All right, I got about five or six more graphs left. And so that's it. That's where we stand on that, man. Stand on business. You know what? We're gonna have to do this number here. The phone may fall. The two graphs that I need are right behind the phone. There we go. Stand on business. These are a pleasure to graft. Like I said, the grafting part's not the hard part. It's keeping them from getting too hot or too cold or too dry afterwards. That's the hardest part of grafting is maintaining them after the fact. If you wanna really ask me, that's what I feel. I've done a ton of beautiful grafts and then had them get killed by the greenhouse getting usually too hot, but also too cold. I've had the chill come through and just it did it this year. I had some, they may or may not live, but they were pushing along fine. The chill hit them, and now we're, uh, we're not looking so good on some of these graphs I did. That would have been worth hundreds of dollars too, but the cold hit them just in time, or maybe they got too hot, one or the other. It's really nasty because this time of year, it's like, it's like a desert. It's like, I don't even know what today feels like it's 70 something. But this is the winter time and we're getting 70 degrees. I don't know, I guess that's normal. It feels more like 80 to be honest. But yeah, I'm having to run the AC in my house. You know what, I think I was grafting one time and like the video got flagged because all they can see is like you buy your crotch and doing stuff. And like the video got flagged for like inappropriate content. content. Like the algos picked up that I was like playing with myself or something. They're like this man's got his legs spread in something of a linear form that he's playing with up and down on these videos. The AI's picked it up. I'm pretty sure I was like, what's going on? Like, why is this video flagged? It's like, oh, it looks like some weird shit that someone would put up because the AI flagged it. That was a while ago though. I guess they fixed that glitch.
You know what else happened? <sighs> I was taking apart all the um, shade cloth off of the uh, fruit trees that were covered, and that shit got in my uh, sinuses. The dust from the shade cloth really got me bad. <clears throat> Last night, I was like, am I getting sick? No, I just breathed in a bunch of dust, particulate matter from that shade cloth. And it really did a number on my uh, my sinuses. Really bad, kind of hurt. So just be careful about that. I want you guys to, to, to be healthy and strong and not make the same mistakes that I have, okay? How's it going? Anyway, I don't know if you heard me. I'd love for these all to take, every single one of them. It's not how it works though. You're lucky to get half. And then the less that come out, the higher the price goes. Unfortunately. I'm getting there. Making my way. I think we're down to the last few. That's what's left. They're quite small. Mm, I'm still hacking shit up. <laughs> Last night. Yeah, it feels miserable. So yeah, got a car. Hopefully I'll be driving again real soon. I was driving for a couple days, it was real fun. I felt free. I felt like a rich person. One of these upper class people you know that have a car. Dang it, man. It does suck to just not have a vehicle, but I got used to it. And the lift will eat you alive. The money on the lift will just eat you alive. Chicken's bugging out. can't tell what's going on, but it's like I gotta get up and check. Sounds like something bad. Fuck. I don't got time for this shit. I gotta run over there real quick. I, I, oh well. Every time I don't run over, there's someone dying. I don't have time to go fucking run over there and check on every little thing. They're making some kind of noise like something bad's happening, but we'll just assume nothing bad is happening. They stopped. There we go. There he goes again.
because you can't really see what I'm doing. Three more. So I guess I could walk you through what happens when we grab on this last one. Well, there's two more left. Take your rootstock, trim it to where you want it. You can have it high or low. I guess it doesn't really matter. The tree will figure it out and you can just prune it up. But lower is typically a little better to do your graft down a little lower, but it doesn't really matter too much. And then, um, can't match up your scion to your rootstock you got to make a smaller cut that's thinner towards the edge almost like a veneer where you just kind of skin the edge of the rootstock see I messed up I got to recut if you put it right down the middle you may not get good cambium contact if the caliper of the rootstock is two or three times the scion so a lot of times I do like an offset cleft graft, which is just like a cleft graft, but offset. And that way you can take a smaller scion and slide it in on the side. And I'll try to show you, but that's what I've done here. It's not, it's not easy to show off because it's gonna fall out of place. It's not balanced well. See, it's over to one side. You see what I'm saying? It's got a little thin cut there. I should have went grocery shopping before I took my car to the mechanic. I always fuck myself that way. And now I'm just like starving. And I hate being at other people's whim, you know? Can I get a ride here? Can I get a ride there? And then by the time you DoorDash or Uber, you're fucked on the money. And I'm just not gonna spend it. I'm just gonna stay hungry. Stay hungry, man. Stay hungry. That's something I'll never forget though. Even when I did make good money, I stay hungry. I don't just go eat like a pig, even though I could. Keep that starve on. Always act like you're losing money. Just pretend like you just lost it.
That's what I think. Every time you make 200, you lost 200. Just keep grinding. I don't like the way this graft is looking, but I'm just gonna roll with it. These are real, I think you get a lower success rate with whatever I'm doing right here. The thinner scion on the bigger rootstock with the Eugenia. I have not had the best luck in the world, but it does work. <clears throat> I'd much rather have it match up evenly with a big fat, you know, I'd rather it be the other way. Big fat scion, little rootstock would be better off. But I didn't have a ton of rootstock material. I'm only banking on about half of these to take at best. If more than half take, I'll be really pleased. I'm gonna go get them into a, a good spot. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 10, 12, 15 of them that look like, um, you know, I grafted some up, so yeah. Okay. Appreciate you guys being there for me. Yeah, we got five, 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 eighteen. I did eighteen. And there's more to do. I'm going through this roll of buddy tape real fast. I'm about to buy a new one soon. Alrighty. Thank you much. We're gonna get on out of here.